Good morning. This is Mrs. Rose Eady, and today we're going to be talking about the blood and lymphatic systems. What is blood? Blood is actually a connective tissue, which is a little bit surprising because we normally think of connective tissues as being things like ligaments or tendons. But blood's consi considered a connective tissue because as it moves throughout your body, it connects, say, your digestive system with your brain. Or your, or your heart with your lungs. As a connective tissue, it is made of both dissolved substances and cells. Plasma is a straw-colored liquid, a yellow liquid, that makes up 55% of blood volume. Plasma contains many important things, including water, nutrients, enzymes, waste products, dissolved gases, salts, hormones, and plasma proteins. Plasma proteins help transport material, help blood clot, fight off infections, and regulate blood pressure. If you want to know what plasma proteins feel like, the closest thing that you can find easily would be the white of an egg. The white of an egg is made of a protein albumin, which is very similar to a plasma protein. There are three groups of red blood cells, or sorry, there are three groups of blood cells. Red blood cells, which are also known as erythrocytes, white blood cells, which are known as leukocytes, and platelets. Red blood cells are disc-shaped cells with a thinner center. They contain hemoglobin, a protein that carries oxygen. When hemoglobin has oxygen with it, it turns a bright red color, giving red blood cells their distinctive color. Red blood cells are produced by the red bone marrow, and after they live about 120 days, they're destroyed by your liver and by your spleen. Sickle cell anemia is a disorder of the red blood cells. Red blood cells that are affected by sickle cell anemia have a different type of hemoglobin. The advantage to this type of hemoglobin is that it prevents malarial infection, which is a problem in many parts of the world. However, when this hemoglobin is in low oxygen areas like capillaries, it collapses and it causes a C-shaped red blood cell. These sickle-shaped cells can get stuck in blood vessels, causing painful clots. If you have sickle cell anemia or know someone with sickle cell anemia, some of the day-to-day -day things that you can do to help them feel better is make sure that they get a lot of fluid. That will minimize the number of blood cells that are forming sickles. They need to make sure they're taking enough folic acid. Folic acid is important because it is involved in the production of red blood cells, and people with sickle cell anemia need to produce more blood cells. It's also important that somebody with sickle cell anemia avoid low oxygen situations, such as plane flights or strenuous exercise. Our red blood cells are also involved with our blood types. Each red blood cell has two categories of proteins attached to the outside of the cell. One is the ABO group. There are four possibilities within the ABO group. You can have A blood, B blood, AB blood, or O blood. The other category of proteins is the RH group. You can either be RH positive or RH negative. We look at the red blood cell blood typing for when we talk about blood transfusions. Blood types must be compatible during a blood transfusion or dangerous complications can occur. So somebody who has A blood may receive A blood or O blood. Somebody with B blood may receive B blood or O blood. O blood can only receive O blood. AB blood can receive A, B, O, or AB. Someone with positive blood can receive positive or negative but somebody with negative blood can only receive negative blood. The next type of cell that we are going to talk about is our white blood cells. White blood cells guard against infection by destroying bacteria and stimulating the immune system. 
the number of white blood cells dramatically increases when an illness occurs. White blood cells can move out of the blood and into tissues to kill bacteria that has not yet made it into the bloodstream. We have four different types of white blood cells. Neutrophils, eosinophils, basophils, and monocytes. The last type of cell in the blood that we're going to talk about is platelets. Platelets are cell fragments that are made in the red bone marrow. Platelets become sticky when near damaged tissue and help form a clot by releasing clotting factors. Hemophilia is a genetic order disorder that is caused by lacking one or more of the clotting factors. The severity of the hemophilia depends on which clotting factor is missing. The current treatment is injecting clotting factor when injury occurs. Interestingly enough, um, in hemophilia, injuries that do not break the surface of the skin, like a bruise, is far more dangerous than one that actually breaks the skin because um, the, the broken skin sets off a different cascade that minimizes the or that minimizes the problems caused by the missing clotting factors. Now, when you, you think about the blood system, there is a separate system that runs alongside of it, and that would be called the lymphatic system. The lymphatic system is needed because the pressure of the blood moving through vessels forces some of the fluid, some of the, the um, plasma, into the surrounding tissues. The lymphatic system collects that fluid and returns it back to the circulatory system at the subclavian vein. Remember, sub means below, clavian is your clavicle. So there's a, a vein that runs right under your clavicle, and that's where the lymph returns to your circulatory system. The parts of the lymphatic system that you'll be required to know are lymph, which is any fluid in tissues, lymph vessels, which are tubes that carry that fluid back to the subclavian vein, lymph nodes, which are bean-shaped enlargements that trap bacteria for the immune system to destroy, your thymus, which produces a type of white blood vessel, or I'm sorry, white blood cell, the T cell, which is found in lymph, and your spleen. Your spleen is essentially a very, very large lymph node that acts as a large bacteria and microorganism filter. You'll also remember that it helps get rid of old red blood cells. That's the end of our slideshow for today. Thank you very much for listening. Have a great day.